Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming. So, uh, just to give you a quick sort of introduction about myself, I uh, I work at Creative as uh, the lead designer. Uh, previously, I've actually worked with uh, Bob. Uh, I've also worked with a uh, design company in Bombay called Tableplane. Uh, I was working briefly with Yahoo some time back. That's how I actually moved to Bangalore. I'm originally from Bombay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's a, that's about it about myself. I just wanted to get a sense for uh, the people here, right? Like in terms of, I I don't know what the sort of like you know mix is. So I just wanted to get a sense of uh, so can all the designers raise their hands? How many designers in the house? Okay, what is it? What about front end engineers? And uh, just developers or other folks. Okay, great. Uh, so, um, have you guys used Creative Mobile at all? Okay. Uh, how many of you have smartphones? Okay, pretty much everybody. And uh, how many of you have how many iPhones, guys? Android. Okay, great. So, uh, just to start off, I mean, now that I get a good sense of, you know, uh, what the sort of, what, who I'm talking to, I'll just give you a quick, uh, I'll start off with just talking about what I'm covering today. So, essentially, um, the plan goes something like this. I'll talk a little bit about the evolution of Creative Mobile. Uh, then, we move into just talking about mobile as a medium, right? Like, how do we sort of, uh, how do we approach mobile as a medium? Uh, and based on that medium, what are the design decisions we had to make uh, while designing Creative Mobile? Uh, so these are more like very high level sort of design decisions that we had to make. Uh, and uh, try to uh, dive a little deeper into the landscape in general, like what, I mean, what's, uh, what are the different browsers? Uh, what are the constraints that we have to work with? What are the different screen sizes, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And then, yeah, just some nuts and bolts in terms of, uh, you know, what what are the things that we actually used? Uh, small little things that actually made the experience the way it is right now. And then we can probably, you know, have some question answers. Okay, so. Uh, Creative Mobile, actually we launched Creative Mobile uh, in June 2010 and uh, this is essentially what Creative Mobile looked like back then. Yeah. This is what Creative Mobile looked like. We actually launched Creative Mobile as a minimal uh, viable product. Essentially when we launched Creative it was uh, mobile, it was just uh, one way you could only search one way for one passenger. So if you notice, you can't even actually add a passenger. It was, we were sort of only looking at uh, business travelers who are on the move and they want to book uh, tickets for themselves. So we just, it was more of like, let's try this out. Let's see how the market responds to this, right? Uh, and as you can see, the first, uh, first cut was very, very bare minimum. Um, after, you know, we, we, we just, I mean, like, the, when we started seeing the response to Creative Mobile, and it was phenomenal, I mean, like, we really were surprised at, like, sort of the traction that the, the mobile product started getting. So, we started to actually invest a little more time trying to understand how we can make the product a little better. Uh, and then we, you know, smartphones were kind of, the penetration was getting better and better uh, back then. And then we sort of, Said okay, let's let's kind of design something for the touch phones. And uh, what you see here, actually, the previous version, right? Pretty much. Uh, so this is where actually at this point we actually forked our product into a smartphone version and like a very basic version. So what the the the, uh, the screenshot that you saw on the previous slide, uh, the the basic version is not really changed that much. Apart from obviously we made some cosmetic changes and stuff like that. But we are fo our, our focus is going to be smartphones, uh, phones that are more capable in terms of um, 
uh, of course, I mean that means that we are also focusing on touch wood, right? So uh, very soon, like you know, we actually added a bunch of features to the mobile. So earlier it was just flight bookings. Then we said, okay, why not, you know, uh, let people access their trips or uh, all the booking history that they've done. Uh, let people actually consume content uh, about, you know, uh, the destination that they are traveling to. So we we had we had trips. We had small world integration, so if you booked a ticket for Bangalore, you would actually be able to access information about Bangalore, where, where to go, what to see, stuff like that. And I think the biggest thing that we did back then was actually launching Express Checkout. Uh, I mean, from the right from the beginning, we felt that you know we, we want to make the mobile product really, really simple and easy to use. So we actually cut down uh, as many fields as possible. We just kind of ruthlessly cut down functionality. We brought it out to the bare minimum, and then we said, okay, what next, right? Uh, how do we kind of make it even easier for people to actually transact on the mobile? Because in general, people are, you know, it's, it, it was new, right? Like people were using, uh, they, they were snacking on, uh, you know, Twitter and they were snacking on Facebook, but you know, transaction was something that people were not really ready for. So we, we kind of took this plunge where we actually we, we introduced Express Checkout. We had um, HTML5, uh, you know, phones were starting uh, starting to support HTML5. So we said, why not kind of use local storage, store credit card details on the on the phone itself. Uh, which kind of was, and then we had obviously a security layer uh, where you couldn't really actually use the credit card details uh, without a clear grip password. So, yeah, I mean, this was uh, in September 2010, and uh, this is what the product looks like. I mean, in, in terms of the user experience, like, they've been obviously. I mean, what I, I mean, what, what the stuff that I actually talked about all this while was like the major milestone, right? Uh, in between, there's been a lot of stuff. We added trains, um, and we, we, you know, incrementally improved the product a lot. But I think uh, very recently, if you guys have sort of been following what's going on at Cleardrip, we actually took Express Checkout, and then we said, hey, you know what? This is working really well for the mobile. We were actually surprised when we looked at the stats. We saw that people were actually adopting Express Checkout. So we said, you know what? This is going to work for the desktop side as well. So we actually launched it for uh, we we rebranded Expressway uh, Express Checkout and we we, we rebranded it as Expressway and uh, no longer do we use HTML5 local storage but uh, the credit cards are stored with us and uh, you can access it on the mobile as well as on the desktop. So I think I think like in general like you know uh, in my entire sort of experience working with mobile. I've seen, like you know, the fact that there are so many constraints in the mobile. Uh, it really makes you think out of the box. And uh, I mean, we've obviously written about this on a blog uh, where we've actually the stuff that we built for the mobile, we've actually brought it in other places. Like we just felt that oh, this works so well. So design-wise, functionality-wise, stuff like that, right? So yeah, I mean that's pretty much where mobile stands right now. Today we have uh, you can actually book trains, flights. You can look at your trip details, and obviously you can uh, access your credit card details for an easier transaction on your mobile. Uh, talking about the medium, right? Like mobile, just like going back to where we started. Uh, we said okay, like you know, we, we've got to build something really great. Um, we had we had a good desktop side. We wanted to build a better mobile experience, right? So, what are we dealing with, right? Uh, the screen size, obviously, the form factor is a big driver in how you actually design for it. Uh, the other main factor is the con connection speed, right? Like in India, I mean, I mean, how many people have 3G? I've never seen anyone actually not complain about 3G, right? Like everyone complains about 3G, like it sucks. Right, so I mean, there is no way out of it. We have to design for low connection speed, at least in this country. Uh, so that was a big driver in terms of the decision we needed to make. Uh, the, the interface itself, right? The mobile is so different. You don't have a keyboard. You don't have a mouse. Uh, the form factor is so different. How does this actually, you know, change things? Um, 
and obviously the you know one one other another factor that kind of sort of drives the design today is you know the just the capability of the phone itself right how much can it process um moving on to the design it's right um now based on what we had like this is this is what we are dealing with how do we sort of like get the best experience right it requires a lot of focus right like we need to kind of really look at i mean for me as a designer right when i look i mean my benchmark was really the desktop side our, our desktop side is already very minimal now i have to make it even more minimal so like that's really requires some amount of focus right um, so i think it's just to sort of really understand what can users actually live with and what can they not live with right i mean it's it's just like kind of really thinking very hard about those things and you, you got to be ruthless you got to just tell guys in your team boss this is not this is not required you got to cut down stuff you got to cut down data you, you, you just have to sort of keep keep it as minimal as possible because you know soon or later things will actually start creeping in right so when you actually go to market it has to be really really simple so just to give you an example in terms of you know where we where we are on the desktop side and where we are on the mobile uh, this is an interesting example this uh, this is our desktop one way search and this is the same search on a mobile application so as you can see a lot of stuff crunched into a small screen and we just jumped a lot of stuff we just felt okay fine you know price and time is the only thing that people care about just just don't worry about anything else right we'll figure it out so yeah we've cut we've cut corners as, as much as we can in terms of presenting data and um, the other thing like we've, we've been also very receptive to user sort of behavior right so we we saw that you know like our, our search patterns on mobile and our search pattern on desktop is completely different we we realized that people are actually on their mobile actually searching for today and tomorrow right so we actually uh, changed our sort of search results to kind of allow users to actually quickly access previous and uh, next day right so what you see here is like someone searched for a day and then he just got kind of he can easily sort of you know toggle between a previous date or a next day. because people are actually researching that to go all the way back you know and just to enter a new date because you know your uh, your destination and source city doesn't really change it's just the dates are changed so we actually sort of made these design decisions to kind of incorporate uh, what users were actually doing on the site uh this is another example of a itinerary so we basically before users actually start booking we present the itinerary so that they can review what they're booking right so this is what it looks like in the desktop and it, i mean this entire thing gets crunched to this much so i mean it was an interesting challenge from a design perspective like you know because it involved sort of you know really think about how do we build the right visual hierarchy you know how do we um you know how do we like sort of make all the information available you know at a arms length stuff like that so i mean like my i mean my experience has been that you have to obsess i mean you got to obsess like crazy you got to think about it day in day out uh, like i mean these what you see today is like not out of one or two iterations there been like 50 iterations in terms of we i mean you know it's like uh, if come from say you know 60% information to like 10 20% information and like it's just been a continuous iterative process uh you got to obsess about details uh because i mean with retina display everything is visible i mean like it's like you are literally under a naked eye so i mean you know you have the technology that can make things beautiful uh, it doesn't take too much to kind of you know sweat the details and uh at least you know uh make sure that the people who actually have this technology have a good experience right so we are we we, we actually started supporting retina display the day it was actually launched in india the day for the iphone 4 was launched in india we actually the next day we actually started supporting retina uh another thing that we got to obsess about is just like no page request sizes 
page waves, right? So, um, and just to give you an example, I wanted to walk me. In fact, we got this sort of small experiment done just to go with Meta Refresh because we wanted to showcase this as a case study. Uh, so, you know, I, I spoke about the forking of the basic side and, you know, the HTML5 side. So, essentially, uh, what used to happen is uh, users actually landed up. So, one is how do we uh, you know, there is obviously this redirection, right? People land up on cleartrip.com now, and they need to go to cleartrip mobile set based on if they are, you know, coming from a mobile device, etc. So, just all this sort of round trip, right, uh, made like people landing up on the mobile set all the more slow. So, we were just trying to think about how we actually cut down that sort of, uh, you know, lag. So, we actually optimized the flow in such a way that, you know, one is we are, people used to actually land up on creative mobile slash M. We actually removed M because there was a redirection. We land, we we did some changes in the backend so that people, if they type in creative.com, they actually land up on the mobile site. So a lot of magic on the backend to sort of just make sure that our sort of uh, uh, you know the page loads in the time that we we like, ideally like it to be right. So just to give you an idea, right? We had about about seven eight requests coming in from the home page, right? Like he said, I mean this is not happening. Approximately, I think the home page on a GPRS connection was taking upwards of 10, 10 seconds or something. Like that. So we 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 separated out the mobile home page and we said, okay, fine, let's look at this exclusively and see how do we cut down the amount of requests that come to this page. We basically brought it down to half the number of requests and then we also cut down the size of uh, the actual page weight, right? So we are at a good uh, 5 seconds per bit. He's not here. Yeah, I think we are at about 5 seconds now. So it's almost twice as fast as what it used to be. Uh, initially, we used to actually use, like, I mean, I don't know how many people are we are familiar with manifest files for you know, HTML files. So we were actually caching our home page because it was slash m, but I think now because it's landing up on creative.com, it's it's a little complicated because uh, we do allow users to actually access our desktop site just in case they they need to you know access more functionality because uh, you know pretty much all phones actually support full running browser right. Uh, I mean, full app application. So, I mean, we've actually we, we removed caching with manifest on the home page. But we plan to uh, we, we plan to sort of introduce it in other page, other pages that people uh, you know uh, sort of use frequently. Okay, so I mean, that's sort of the design slash you know performance bit that we did uh, some time back. Uh, just talking about the landscape, right? Mobile landscape. I mean. As designers, we were kind of like, you know, rejoicing over the fact that IE is finally dead. And we just got ourselves into all this, right? Uh, millions, of, millions of devices, different screen sizes, different browser capabilities. How do you sort of now uh, take care of all this stuff, right? Another challenge that we do. So you have different hardware, uh, you know, there are people still using like phones that actually have trackballs and trackpads. Uh, so you got to sort of balance, you know, between touch and uh, cursor-based interactions. Uh, browser capabilities, right? We, you'll have browsers that are very, very advanced, and then you have browsers which are sort of, you know, very basic even today. Uh, so just talking about the browser, right? Pretty much like these, you know, fall into like the more popular category, and then there are. New browsers that are emerging, Chrome for Android and Firefox are sort of you know just just launched. So I mean, we, 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 we on and off we do get like feedback from our customers if things are breaking and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean these are all challenges. So I mean, if you guys are designing for mobile, so you got to take all this into consideration. So we have, I mean, resolutions, different resolutions that you got. I mean, even though you know the small screen is a constant you have your uh, you have this like you have variations in resolution within that sort of uh, category you have different orientations so 
uh, you, you still have Blackberries around, which is a landscape orientation. All the smartphones and all the touch phones have kind of moved into a landscape orientation. Uh, and you have different pixel densities to you know, sort of worry about. Okay, so the good news is that you know the majority of the browsers are actually getting powered by WebKit. So you have one group, obviously I am not saying that all, all browsers are powered by WebKit, but most of the, uh, I would say 50% of now the, all the browsers that are kind of becoming popular are powered by WebKit, which is the good news. Uh, you also, you, mean you have Opera and, um, and Blackberry, I mean the older Blackberries, the newer Blackberries have moved into WebKit, which is a good thing. Um, the other good news is like even though this transition is happening, browsers are quickly catching up. So you know that's that's a good thing. Uh, there's, there's tremendous CSSP support. Um, so talking about you know just the nuts and bolts, right? Like, see, I mean, we actually didn't do anything special in terms of. I mean, yes, we we spend a lot of time on sort of you know cutting down the clutter, but there are things that are ready readily available. I mean, we didn't have to sort of, it's not rocket science, it's all documented, uh, it's out there, like none of this stuff, I mean, all the stuff that I'm going to talk about right now is like available and just, I mean, pretty much everyone is talking about it. So I think this, I, I, I kind of only picked up things that we used and we saw benefit in. So I think like, you know, it's a good checklist, uh, this pretty much sort of covers you know, 60-70% of the things that you would like to do from the book. So, on the HTML front, you know, I think the one major thing, just talking about like, you know, the, the actual sort of execution, right? One thing you need to know, really sort of worry about is the viewport, right? Uh, now, why, why would you, I mean, one is, what is a viewport, right? The viewport is essentially, the, the, it's a space in which, you know, your content goes in the browser. Right, uh, and that needs configuring because all browsers kind of have default sort of sizes that they get done. So you'll probably notice, right, when you open up a website uh, in your Safari browser, it kind of constrains it in a specific width. Now that width, Safari sets it at 980 pixels, right? So all your sort of content will actually, so it, it kind of sort of assumes that most websites are approximately that size and will actually sort of constrained into that side. Essentially what it means is the physical sort of, uh, it's restricting the physical width of your website to 980 pixels and shrinking it down. So looking at this image, right, essentially what it's doing is, I mean the actual uh, resolution of our iPhone is 320 pixels and this image is also 320 pixels but it's assuming that this page is 980 pixels and that's why it's scaled down, right. So that's why you need to actually configure your like sort of viewport. So talking about the viewport meta tag, right? Uh, you can actually, so one is, or you need to sort of uh, define the width that your content needs to render in, right? So, uh, I mean like, so the way you do it is basically you use, you, there's, there's a meta tag that you can actually put in and say, okay, fine, this is, uh, you know, th this is the way that I want my content to render it. And then you can have some like sort of more controls like uh, what you want it to actually scale at when it actually renders. Uh, so normally, I mean for mobile websites, it's good to have it at like one because that's the actual size. One means actual size. And then the other thing you can do, you have more controls like you can actually uh, switch off or rather disable, I mean disable the browser from users to scroll, so I mean, or rather zoom, so they can't really pinch and zoom. But uh, I, we, we've done that on our side because for us, uh, that's important. We don't want our layout to break, and you know, uh, we, we are sort of working in that space. So yeah, I mean, viewports is something which is like the bare essentials to start off when you're doing a mobile site. Uh, some of the other things that sort of you need to kind of, you know, for us, we we had sort of you know helpline numbers and stuff that. And also we had a lot of numbers in general, right? So we had we had booking IDs on our site, we had flight timings, and the browser essentially thought these are phone numbers and it used to actually link them, right? So, I mean, there's a way to sort of switch off like the browser to actually automatically make it a link. 
but you can sort of fall back to a more sort of robust way by you know actually giving it a link with the user. Okay. Um, one of the other thing that you need to really do is really making like you know text input really really simple, right? So all this is all available. Uh, iPhone has been supporting it for a very long time. Uh, slowly, all browsers are supporting it. BlackBerry 6 is supporting it. Uh, Android, in its recent sort of upgrade, is almost supporting all of these HTML5 attributes. So you know, you you, you say input type is equal to email. You get an email keyboard. Telephone. You would say tell. It's a telephone number. Uh, there's also a number, but actually there's a small problem with that. Actually, iOS 5 actually considers it as a number and puts uh, comma. So we had this problem on our. We used to use type is equal to number on our credit card field, and it actually put commas, which used to kind of look like a sort of, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, put commas into hundred. So we had to remove it, and actually there's a fallback. You can actually use pattern is equal to zero to nine, and then you see only those keys. Uh, <clears throat> also, I mean, another good thing to do is just sort of switch off all your auto corrects and sort of auto complete wherever you don't want it. So, you know, your first name, I mean, if you are you're collecting information about the names, email address, you don't want the auto complete to come in the way of the customer, right? So, all this, these small little things actually sort of remove all the friction between the user and your product and it sort of becomes much easier to use. Uh, the other thing we did is, I mean, if you, you notice, you know, uh, Safari and Android actually have an address bar that sticks to the bottom. You can actually use a small script that kind of scrolls the address bar back into place so you have more sort of space uh, for your content. Uh, some iOS specific stuff that you can do, I guess, I mean, this is things that you probably, you've done mobile side, you've been doing it already. Um, you can, there are two types of icons that you can, you can actually add your, web page on the home, on, on your home screen which sort of almost feels like it's an app. It's essentially a bookmark to your website. Uh, there are two ways of doing it. You can actually put a flat icon and then, so if I, this obviously is not very clear but there's a slight difference. This was actually a flat icon which iOS automatically put their glass sheet. Uh, you can also customize your icon. You have to use a specific ta tag and it actually customizes it. Uh, yeah, you can you can open your website in a full screen mode so that it actually looks like a web app. Uh, so I mean, you can customize certain things like the status bar and stuff like. That. On the CSS front, I guess one of the biggest things that you guys need to sort of look at is media queries. Right? Uh, media queries is everything when it comes to like designing for mobile. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff, right? You can, I mean, you, you can sort of just like target specific screen sizes, uh, you know, have customizations to specific screen sizes, specific orientations, pixel densities. Uh, so, I mean, these are, I mean, I'll obviously put this up so that you guys, I mean, all this may not be very visible, but uh, you, you can refer to it later. Uh, how do you support Retina higher density, right, or higher density? So, I mean, just to look at one example, we have. Uh, you have a default like sprite, this is essentially all the uh, credit card logos, and then you have 1.5x. So basically, Android has, I think, three levels of uh, three different pixel densities. They have a default 1x, a 1.5x, and they have a 2x. Uh, iOS just has two, uh, 1x. I mean, this is a default pixel density and like a uh, HD version of it. So yeah, I mean you can sort of like uh, actually deliver a much crisper image to like uh, browsers that actually support it. Some of the other handy tweaks that you can sort of do. So I mean, uh, what Safari does by default when you actually rotate your phone is actually it adjusts the screen size, right? Oh, sorry, the font size. So you can actually disable that. If, if you want to, I mean right now we have not done too many customization when you are in landscape mode but if you sort of disable this you can actually do a lot of customization in the sense that you can actually showcase more content in a landscape mode and stuff like that. Some other CSS tweaks, you know you, you probably noticed there is a sort 
sort of a very semi-transparent grey highlight that uh, shows up when you actually click one of them and disable that. Uh, you, you can prevent users from actually selecting test text and like a bunch of other stuff. So I think that pretty much rounds it. Um, open for questions. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So I was very curious to find out whether you have, how you have done your mobile version of the content side. Um, I thought uh, whether or not you have used the media to achieve this thing. Okay. But I failed to get a system because uh, you have minimized and compressed your code to a uh, very great extent. So I want to know where do you, how much content architecture did you change and how much of media service did you make to do that? Just to explain. Okay, so the question is essentially how, many, how, how much of rewriting you did? So uh, we we essentially it's a different site altogether. It's a completely different front end. Uh, in fact, a different. I mean, obviously the, the the data is the same, but like the, the front end and the, the back end is sort of different because uh, the flows have changed a little bit on the mobile. So it's completely different from that perspective. Uh, media queries we've not used, used apart from like targeting specific pixel density. So if you want to do retina, then we've done uh, within a media query to kind of support different image sizes and stuff like that. Um, but apart from that, we've not done media query. I think the media query comes in handy when you want to actually customize for a specific size, right? So we say that, hey, you know what? Uh, everyone gets this experience, but guys who come, who, I mean, any guy who comes to my site who has a sort of browser that's less than 240 pixels, like do this, right? So you kind of override style. So we've, uh, luckily we've kind of designed from grounds up. So we've taken into consideration what it would, what the experience would be for a smaller screen. So we just use it for pixel densities to answer your question. Okay. Uh, question. Given the fact that the technology is good today, and if you had a, let's say, if you were to decide as a to move from desktop to mobile today, do uh -huh. you think that media queries are sufficient enough to kind of do the same version, or still you would take a different kind of architecture? It really depends, actually. I mean, in the sense, like, we, uh, it depends on, like, how one is, how heavy your current sort of desktop version is, right? Like, is it, I mean, in the sense, if it's too heavy, then you probably need to sort of rewrite everything. Uh, but, like, things like, for example, like lighter products that we have, like, for example, we have, you know, a blog, you know, you know corporate site, and stuff like that, then we would not, you know, put in the effort to actually build something from scratch. We just use media query and it works pretty well. You know, we'll switch off some content. Okay, there will be some content that will load up which will not really have. Which will sort of just you know be page weight, dead page weight, and we switch it off. But yeah, I mean, like you said, I think those those are less risky, so we can do that. Yeah. Um, it was like on your question about deciding between mobile and the side versus the media. So yeah, I mean, like this question is yeah. So the question was. Uh, uh, what was it? This, oh, I mean, in the sense, what are the discussions about internally about like native versus mobile, right? I mean, mobile web. So we've been obviously like you know uh, big believers in sort of being able to push uh, more functionality to our customers as soon as we can. Uh, native apps, unfortunately, you know, don't give you that like that flexibility. Here we can push stuff in the middle of the day if things are not right. So we've shied away from native apps, uh, obviously, but I, I mean, they, they obviously have their advantages. It's, it's, it's a good distribution channel. It has it, it has a better user experience and stuff like that. So yeah, we are, we are spending time to kind of see, you know, there are ways to, you know, actually look at that as a channel as well. In fact, I mean, like we are sort of, you know, we, we are working on some ideas right now. So frankly. So the primary consideration was how fast we can push to market. Yeah. What is the difference between 
WebKit is essentially a uh, it is, it is an engine that powers the, I mean it actually uh, powers the rendering on the browser. So it, it's, it's a rendering engine for browser. Uh, yes. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is sort of open source. I mean everyone's using it. You have Chrome using WebKit and Safari uh, and other people. Yes. So, uh, the question is what kind of analytics tools are you using? Sure. Uh, we have not used any analytics tools right now uh, because uh, that's an additional sort of script that you need to run on the front end. Uh, so, we have kind of avoided that, but we, we do look at our server logs to see you know how people are behaving so it's kind of right now it, it's not it's kind of rudimentary but it does what we needed to do um, so yeah we look at conversion we see where the drop-offs are so if say for example we realize that you know uh, people are actually not going beyond you know like say one step uh, we actually you know, experiment with some like obviously we'll have a we'll have some inkling what the problem could be. We'll actually try it out for a couple of days, switch it, switch you know, just kind of make a small tweak, see if people respond to it, and that's right. normally how we actually do it. No, AB requires a much like I mean, it requires a bigger infrastructure. I mean, like in the sense, right now, uh, yeah, we we are obviously you know investing you know effort in like building a mobile product but still you know uh, we don't have the resources that we'll actually like to have you know to sort of build that infrastructure for EB tests and stuff like that. So how many tablet devices no so right now like uh, we we're not targeting uh, tablet uh, tablets are uh, like tablets actually access our desktop side. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was like we, I mean, we kind of didn't want to, have, so like you know, insurance and all that comes in over here. Sorry. Is it included by the part or is it no, we, we don't have. Uh, so the question is whether why, why the insurance is not part of um, the mobile, right? Uh, yeah, we excluded it because it kind of requires a decision making, right? And we want to kind of, like I said, cut down on any sort of decision. So we, 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 yeah, I mean, like yeah, we, people would have to make a decision, right? Like suddenly there's one one more sort of dimension you're adding uh, to the product. Yeah, we've not done it for our mobile side. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, are we using another, are we using the GS framework to actually for our mobile side? We're not using uh, GS framework because uh, our site is, I mean, pretty. I mean, in, in terms of. Uh, it, it's not it's not very dynamic. We still need to kind of uh, sort of figure out what the browser can support, right? In the sense, there's too much discrepancy between browsers, so we want to we kept it simple. There's, you know, very minimal JavaScript we use. We're not using any framework. In fact, a uh, lot of the JS that we're using on like widgets we're using is actually split that down, extracted only the things that we need, and use it on the mobile. Side. So it's it's very very sort of uh, you know, it's, it's a stripped down version of our original framework, but we have not used any external framework. Have you experimented with the responsive design? Sorry? Have you experimented with the responsive website? As in, why are you using the media page? Why do you have such a mobile site? Like I said, right, like, uh, the our desktop site has obviously taken, you know, has sort of evolved over four or five years, right? Uh, there are things that we don't have to actually, you know, uh, we don't have to have customers pay for that in, in the sense in terms of bandwidth cost, right? Uh, where you can actually deliver the same, you can deliver a better experience with something which is 
much more lighter uh, and you know what I mean it's, it's just actually it's bandwidth it's just like it's, it's an like additional effort right you always higher the bandwidth right so why not separate no, but that's dead weight, right? So if you have content that you're hiding, the, the content is still getting delivered through the pipe, right? It, it actually goes to the client side and then you actually like sort of switch it off. So like I said, like for lighter sites, it makes sense. Like our blog is like that. I mean, I mean, we just wanted to use responsive, we tried it out, we experimented. Uh, our account, the new account to a certain extent is responsive. Like you could probably check it out on a tablet to see how it works. Yeah. Okay. So you done. Thanks, guys.